What I noticed um, when I was actually giving this assignment to other Grove City students is that oftentimes they were either doing a service learning project that was more thematically based or uh, drew on skills that they were teaching in the classroom and either are perfectly appropriate for service learning. So I thought I would just share with you uh, um, some examples of thematic uh, service learning projects and skills based service learning projects. You can do either or you could even do um, one that integrates both. Um, it, it seems that some content areas lend themselves more to thematic and others lend themselves more to skills space, um, but you know your content better than I, unless it's English, and so um, I, I want you to know that you can do either or um, whatever you think is most appropriate. Um, so a thematic based unit plan is one, or service learning plan is one in which the students will um, take a theme that they're learning in your classroom and actually see how it's implemented in their community service site. So it, it gives, again, a lot more life and meaning uh, to the themes that they're studying in your class. Um, so one example is actually the project that I did um, my study on in Houston, Texas for my dissertation, and that was um, uh, my husband actually was teaching a class in an elite private school in Houston and so his students even though they lived in, right in the Houston city limits they were about 10 minutes from uh, the lower income part of the city and yet they knew nothing about it um, and so he really wanted to burst that uh, bubble of privilege for them and, and give them some exposure to a different culture. So he was an economics teacher there so um, for a three week intercession um, they, the teachers were allowed to teach whatever they wanted and the students could sign up for whatever class they wanted. So he taught um, a class on poverty in Houston. And so during the morning time he taught them economic concepts and principles and then he also um, taught them principles of poverty specifically to um, Houston. And so then um, like they would read articles about the poverty problem and things like that. Then in the afternoon he took his students to a Salvation Army uh, Senior Citizen Center where um, almost I think just about every uh, senior citizen was Latino there and uh, they were all very low income. And they would go there in the morning, have uh, a little light breakfast, and then they would play um, dominoes and other games and do crafts. Um, and then they would have lunch there. And um, sometimes the Salvation Army would take them on uh, little trips, like to uh, Walmart, um, things like that. Um, the students also had the opportunity to follow uh, the Meals on Wheels um, volunteers distributing meals to actual people's homes. So again, they um, had the opportunity to see how another um, ethnic group and another economic group as well live. Um, and so as part of that class, they also had to do a case study where they took what they learned from the class and they chose one of the senior citizens that they had developed a really strong rapport with and they actually um, interviewed them on their biography and shared that in the case study and then together with uh, that senior citizen they actually um, created a, a statement of a problem that Houston was facing in, in working with their low-income people and uh, what they and the senior citizen believed should be the solution for that. And so that involved a little bit of research as well. Um, and so they presented their case studies at the end of the experience and they had a big uh, fiesta at the end where they had dancing and um, games and things uh, with their senior citizen friends. So what I did was I studied um, the students very specifically for how they changed multiculturally as a result of that experience. And we'll share a little more about that um, at the end of my kind of sharing with you more examples of service learning. So, but just hang on to that. Remember that that was the, the idea or the, the structure of my husband's service learning project. And then I'll share with you how they developed um, in a few moments. Um, another example of a thematic service learning project is looking at gene mutation. So that's a concept that they learn in science class. And then working with um, students either in Special Olympics, or I know my niece who has Down syndrome, which is a gene mutation, um, actually um, has a program where she goes to the YMCA once a week. And uh, she and her other friends, uh, with a lot of them with Down syndrome, but other disabilities as well, um, learn how to swim. And 
it's entirely volunteer run. It's a lot of high school students who are working with them. A lot of those high school students happen to be on a swim team, um, but they don't have to be. Um, and so they, the students would work with students, uh, other young people who have gene mutations, so that they can kind of see and really empathize with people who have um, that difficulty in their lives. So again, it really will help them connect emotionally to the concept of gene mutation, and then they're much more likely to remember the um, more specific concepts within that theme. You could also do cross-curricular projects as well, um, just bringing together uh, English and social studies or science and math, um, psychology and English um, to do a multidisciplinary service learning project. That is also a, a great opportunity that service learning affords. Um, you may be in a class where, or, or teaching a class where you feel like this doesn't really fit with me. Perhaps it's math, um, and so there is still plenty for you to do with service learning with math. So you may just look at it from a skills-based vantage. Um, so this is where you take the skills that you're teaching the students in the classroom and then apply it to um, a skill that they need to do something in the community and for the community. So a few examples of this are um, here in uh, Grove City. Um, once, uh, once in a while for January intercession, I teach uh, culturally relevant pedagogy here, and my students spend uh, the two weeks also going to George Junior Republic. And there at George Junior, we work with one particular class, and um, in this example with skills based, they learned how to write poetry, uh, the students did at George Junior working with my students. So my students were doing a service learning project to teach George Junior students how to write poetry. And then the George Junior students, after learning how to write poetry, they taught senior citizens who we brought in to how to write that same those same forms of poetry. And then at the end of the week, we all had a poetry slam, and the senior citizens and the George Junior students came together and shared their poetry. And it was really an incredible intergenerational opportunity, um, which I would also highly encourage you to consider, because in this day and age in America, we are so transient that a lot of families, and you may be one yourself, don't get to grow up with their grandparents. I know I live six hours uh, from my dad, um, and so my children have not, you know, they only get to see him a few times a year. My husband's parents were in Tennessee, so again, um, we, we didn't have that intergenerational connectedness as it were, you know, 40 years ago when grandparents lived in the same household as their children once they couldn't um, look after themselves. Um, and that's important for humanity, um, for us to have that sense of respect for those who are older and who have come before us, and also to learn how to nurture people who are struggling. Um, so you have that opportunity, again, with service learning, to bring your students in touch with um, a different culture and also a different generation as well. And it's very exciting and enriching for all, all those who are involved. Another example of skills base could be in science class if you're teaching them how to do something, you're in this case how to recycle, then you have them actually create a recycling program perhaps for their school experience, their school um, if they don't have a good recycling experience or um, the recycling program yet or even the community. Um, if you notice, if the students notice going into the McDonald's that there's no recycle bins, um, then perhaps they um, would write to McDonald's. They might also go to McDonald's and, and offer to set the program up and take care of it for them and, and do the collections and things. Um, but there are lots of opportunities for uh, improving on recycling. And Grove City, uh, on Grove City College's campus, if you ask me um, as well, we could do better with that. Um, and then we have uh, also, uh, early in my uh, trying out service learning, I started service learning my very first semester of uh, teaching. And I tried it like very small and then worked into more complicated service learning projects as I um, became more comfortable. But one of them that I did at about my third or fourth year of teaching was to... Um, I, I was teaching speech debate and so they had to do an oral interpretation and I wanted it to be more meaningful to them and for them to really put everything into it a, a lot of effort and so instead of having them present their oral interpretation to the class I set up um, a, a collaboration with the kindergarten in our school district and I drove them over to the kindergarten and they had to present their oral, oral interpretation of different fairy tales 
to the kindergartners. And so the kindergartners were their audience instead of their peers, uh, which puts more pressure on them and it's a more authentic task. So the kindergartners enjoyed it, so that was the service to them, but also uh, it, it definitely um, made the students take the uh, skill more seriously in a real context. So think about uh, your own ideas for your content area and um, what you think you could do to integrate service learning and really use it to um, teach your students the concepts and make them be concepts that they learn for the rest of their lives through that service learning. So start already uh, brainstorming maybe on a piece of paper or something, some ideas that you may have.